I'm not 100% sure where I read this stat, but the average person watches the entirety of The Office at least seven times per year. Or maybe that was eating spiders in their sleep, I forget. Either way, to many people, The Office is a major part of day-to-day -day life. I'll be the first to admit that I'm one of those people. It's pretty much the soundtrack to my life. It's always on in the background, even if I'm not paying attention. In all my years of cycling through the series, I've picked up on a couple of things that typically fly under the radar to the untrained eye. Most notably, I realized something extremely interesting about Kevin Malone. To most, he's the big, goofy accountant who plays a major dummy. He's a hilarious character because the sheer notion of an accountant who's mindless and downright bad at math is comedy gold. He even makes up his own number for when things don't add up properly. That's the level of incompetency that we're talking about with this guy. This is a button. Okay. In fact, he wasn't even supposed to be an accountant in the first place. Michael Scott, the branch manager, even admits that Kevin came in applying to work in the warehouse, but Michael saw something in him and decided that he was a better fit for accounting despite no prior accounting knowledge. And that's where he's worked for at least a decade now. While that might sound funny, it's also remarkably impressive. Imagine being hired for a job that you're completely and utterly unqualified for, and yet you manage to stick it out for years? That's quite a feat. Which brings me to what this entire theory is about. Kevin Malone isn't the idiot that we think he is. In fact, he's actually brilliant, and he's been playing with every one of us since day one. The clues are everywhere. There are so many instances in which Kevin accidentally lets his intelligence slip. Which begs the question, why pretend to be dumb? Well, my assumption is that he enjoys the low expectations. He's lazy and he doesn't want people to think that he's competent, so if everyone believes that he's a moron, he could just kick back and coast. To take it one step further, I believe Kevin Malone is actually secretly embezzling money from the company and pocketing it for himself, but we'll touch more on that in a bit. If you've seen the show, you're probably wondering how the heck I can call this guy brilliant, he's clearly an idiot. That's just what he wants you to think though. The guy is a bored, maniacal genius, and the proof is in the pudding. Coincidentally, he also loves pudding. In the very last episode of The Office, once the series jumps forward to Dwight and Angela's wedding, we see that Kevin has actually left his job at Dunder Mifflin and is now running what appears to be a successful bar. He even looks to be in better shape than the last time we saw him. If he was as dumb as he would have us believe, there's no way he'd be able to run his own business. Running an entire bar is no easy task, but the show sort of glosses over that fact. During the Casino Night episode, Kevin reveals that he won a World Series of Poker bracelet for the 2500 No Limit Deuce 7 draw in 2002. Does that sound like the type of thing that an idiot could win? His gambling habits don't even end there. He actually has quite the gambling problem. He's always talking about betting in some capacity, whether it's at the racetrack or even betting on John Mellencamp to win an Academy Award at 1,000 to 1 odds. For a guy who pretends to be bad at his job, he sure is fantastic with numbers when it comes to betting. Which kind of makes you think, doesn't it? For further proof of his impressive intelligence, look no further than the trivia night in Philadelphia. When Andy needed to make some quick cash to meet the branch's quota, he takes the entire team down to Philly to crash a trivia night at a gay bar that Oscar was attending. Dunder Mifflin's A team and B team both get eliminated, but it's Kevin's group of outcasts that ends up dethroning Oscar's heavily favored squad. In fact, it's Kevin who gets the winning answer and clinches their victory. In many ways, he's a shark. That's the term for someone who pretends to be bad at something in order to lure in a competitor to make an unwise wager. It's common with pool or darts or even poker, where someone will continuously lose until there's money on the line and then suddenly they're on fire. Seeing as how Kevin is a gambler by nature, it would make sense that he takes this approach into his everyday life. In reality, he's actually always in the process of manipulating people and toying with them, only he does it in the most endearing kind of way so nobody really notices. 
he loves to set the bar as low as possible so that there aren't any expectations to live up to. A prime example of this tactic is when he plays the board game Dallas with Andy and Daryl. They think that they're playing with a moron, but it was Kevin who came out the winner in the end and tricked them into taking their money. They had no idea he was just toying with them, and they never even found out. That's how good he is. And that is Dallas. And the guy is manipulative through and through. He always knows just how to suck up to every boss he's ever had. He knows that staying in the boss's good books is always advantageous, so he adapts his personality to get along with whoever signs his paychecks. He was always the only one laughing at Michael's inappropriate and unfunny jokes. He was even a suck-up when Will Ferrell's character D'Angelo Vickers took over as the manager. He even has an interesting moment with Robert California, the then-CEO of the company. Robert was looking for fresh ideas and decided to get some insight from the staff. It was nothing but bad idea after bad idea until Kevin got up and started talking about cookies. Robert assumed that this was some sort of deep metaphor and bought into it, only later to be hit hard by reality when he realized that Kevin was literally just talking about cookies. Or was he? That excited little smile on Kevin's face says another story. Almost like he was proud of the fact that he just managed to mess with debatably the most intelligent character in the show. Kevin was probably just trying to see how much fun he could have toying with Robert, a guy that everyone else is intimidated by. Kevin is also unbelievably intuitive. He's always the first person to find out about all the secret relationships that transpire in the show. He does it with Jim and Pam, predicting that there was something going on with them even before they go public with their relationship. He does the same thing with Aaron and Andy, and even figures out that Oscar is having an affair with Angela's husband, the senator. For crying out loud, he even knew that Pam was pregnant because he noticed that her boobs got bigger. Perhaps not the most polite of observational techniques, but nonetheless, it appears as though Kevin is constantly a step ahead of everyone else at Dunder Mifflin. What I find most interesting about all of Kevin's mess-ups and blunders is that they're never on a major scale the way that someone like Michael messes up. Whereas Michael will do something astronomically damaging like promising college tuition to an entire grade and then reneging on his offer, Kevin manages to fly under the radar by consistently making small mistakes. It's almost like he does this on purpose. He messes up just enough to remind everyone that he's incompetent and that they shouldn't rely on him for anything, but never enough that it's a major problem or that it dangerously affects the company or puts his job in jeopardy. He's extremely calculated and careful about just how badly he's willing to mess up. All in all, Kevin is just bored and, as a result, enjoys messing with people. He likes getting a rise out of his co-workers, especially Oscar and Angela. But there's another, more criminal reason why he doesn't want people to know how smart he is. It's because he's embezzling money from the company. We already discussed how he wasn't even applying for an accounting job, but got it anyway and managed to work there for years. We talked about his World Series of Poker background and his penchant for gambling. The guy is a swindler, that much we can all agree on. But I believe that he's not just tricking his co-workers, he's actually pulling a fast one on the entire company of Dunder Mifflin. The theory is that Kevin's been secretly stealing money from the company this entire time. He always pretends to mess up at his job, despite being an actual whiz with numbers. Perhaps his mistakes have slowly added up over the years, you know, a couple of accounting errors here and there, can really lead to a lot of leftover money after a while. If done properly, he could have saved up enough to, uh, I don't know, open up his own bar? In fact, in the episode The Convict, Martin explains that he went to jail for insider trading. Later, during a private one-on-one -on -one interview with the camera crew, Kevin lets it slip that Martin went to jail for the exact same thing that he does at work every single day. Hmm. Knowing what we know about Kevin and how much he loves to toy with people, it would totally be his style to confess on camera and then play it off with a lovable, goofy chuckle so that nobody takes him seriously. He literally admits it, but nobody bats an eyelid. Is Kevin Malone a secret genius, or am I reading way too deep into this and he's actually just a dummy? Sound off in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. 
Before you go, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest releases. Until next time, bye!